I think this is going to be one of the most powerful podcasts you've ever listened. If you're interested at, in the cutting edge of brain optimization from everything from nootropics to sleep, to neurofeedback, to combining all of these things to create high performance states. So make sure you check it out. All right. Welcome everyone to a new episode of the NeuroFlex podcast. I am your host, Toby Passman. Hope you guys got to check us out at the NeuroFlex booth that we had at the Canadelic Conference this past weekend in Miami, Florida. We had a blast doing uh, infrared helmet demos alongside giving out a lot of cool merch. So really appreciate it to all of you guys who stopped by the booth. Um, we are still running a special for the, that Canadelic Conference. So um, check us out on Instagram at NeuroFlex Florida, N-U-R-O-F-L-E-X. Florida to find out more information about that. On today's episode, we have a very special guest, Matt Gallant. Matt is the CEO and co-founder of BiOptimizers and has a bachelor's degree in kinesiology. He's been a strength and conditioning coach for multiple pro athletes, a self-defense instructor, and has over 15 years experience formulating supplements. He's also a serial entrepreneur that's built over 13 profitable companies. So Matt, um, really excited to have you on the show with us today. Yeah, same. Um, again, anybody who's into neuromodulation is instantly an ally, a brother or a sister. It's uh, one of my favorite topics. And obviously what we're going to be diving in today around sleep is a huge part of brain health. So excited. Agree. Definitely. Definitely one of the foundational pillars of brain health. I'm curious, Matt, how did you originally get going and, you know, how, what was your introduction to the field of biohacking or just really optimizing your biology? I got a weight set when I was 12 and, you know, trained a little bit, but where I really got into it was when I was 16, I went to the beach and I saw two guys that were just huge. They were jacked, you know, bodybuilders. They became friends many years later and I felt weak and puny. You know, and I, and I decided I need to start putting on some muscle mass. And I just come off losing. I went from like 190 to 147 the the previous months. I had I was running and doing an Atkins diet, so I've been basically keto now for almost 30 years. So the losing weight was really interesting. And then I got into bodybuilding. I was training twice a day. I was doing uh, the anabolic diet, which was a cyclical ketogenic diet. And just got obsessed, you know, I was uh, using hydrolyzed amino acids. I was measuring my body fat every week uh, at the university. And, you know, it was just amazing to see the body transform. Like if anybody's never lost a lot of body fat or put on a lot of lean muscle mass, they don't know how empowering that is. It's it's a really experiential Thing that transforms how you see the body. It's like, okay, I can, I can change things. I can, I can do this. I can do that. Um, so that really got me into it. And then I discovered a guy named Christoph Clugston who was doing these self-defense videotapes at the time. This is prior to DVDs. And I got completely hooked on that. So like that was my next uh, major focus. And it was all, like, all about it nervous system optimization and training the nervous system and fine motor skills. And I got really, really hooked on that for many years. And that was a lot of fun. And then along the journey, yeah, I helped my best friend lose 191 pounds in 18 months. I got my degree in kinesiology and just loved helping people uh, lose weight, build muscle mass. Uh, but my probably my favorite clients was, was pro athletes, worked with fighter and NHL guy. And I mean, they're, they're the, the best clients because they'll just do anything. You can really push them to, to their limits. And then I met Wade along the journey. Uh, Wade is from the same area that I'm from. He was came back to visit his parents. I was a trainer at the gym. I'd built a very successful personal training company. And then Wade and I just hit it off. I brought him to dinner. And then next thing you know, I, I moved to Vancouver where he was and he hooked me up there. And then I built another personal training company. We, we and I were just friends, but he was winning national natural bodybuilding championships as a vegetarian. And I'm like, that's really unique. 
I've never, you know, I mean, this is 20 years ago. Nobody was talking about plant-based diets at the time. Like we should probably put together a product and sell it. And keep in mind, I was already successful on the internet at that time. My first real hit on the internet was like around 2002. So we put together a product called Freaky Big Naturally. And it was a hit. Uh, it was successful right out of the gate. We started with like a hundred bucks. I think we sold like 11 or 12 grand first month and made like a million dollars in sales the first 18 months. And then, you know, we, we built our first product, which was Masszymes, which is still our second best selling product today. It's, a, it's the strongest protein digesting enzyme blend on the market. And, you know, credit to one of our mentors, Dr. Michael O'Brien. Uh, Dr. Michael O'Brien was one of the most vibrant 70 plus year old men we had ever met. I mean, at the time he absolutely was. And we spent a full day with him and he taught us about enzymes and probiotics. And that, that completely changed how we saw the body. It was like a major paradigm shift because coming from the bodybuilding world where everything is just macros and calories and, you know, it's like, oh no, we went one level deeper. It's not just about consuming food. It's how do you break it down? How do you transport it? How do you assimilate it into muscle tissue or other you know, energy or cell walls? And the enzymes was, again, absolute game changer. And we, we hyperdosed enzymes for, for several months. And we're just like, we need to sell this. So we're like, okay, how do we build something better? And at the time, like, nobody was really focusing on the proteolytic side, the protein digesting side. And that led us to building mass time. So yeah, that's a bit of the background. I mean, there's a lot of other stories we can get into, but that's that's the the core experiences that have led me here. And I'd love to discuss enzymes a bit more because I feel like most listeners are probably familiar with like enzymes role in, in digestion, which obviously play a huge role in. But tell me, what do we need to know about enzymes and actually building muscle mass? First of all, enzymes do an estimated 25,000 different things in the human body. I mean, they are the hardest worker in the room, as The Rock would say. Uh, yeah, they, they're basically involved in everything from thinking to blinking. So when it comes to digestion, it starts when you when you smell food, especially if it's a carb carbohydrate-rich food, your brain will actually recognize there's carbohydrates. And it, it will release amylase in your mouth and amylase is the enzyme that breaks down carbs. So as you're chewing, the amylase will start pre-digesting the carbohydrates. There is also enzymes being released in your stomach uh, as, as the food gets down there. And as people get older, uh, enzyme production obviously decreases as many other things in the body, such as hydrochloric acid, hormones, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's a really key thing to realize is we're biologically programmed to peak at around 28 to 30, and then we're programmed to decline. And unless people actively do things to counter this decline, the, the decline is going to happen a lot faster than it needs to. And I really, in my mind, I think there's a, a new paradigm of aging, which a lot of people are on, which is there's no reason to to go through this cycle of peaking at 28, declining, and then being decrepit at 70, 80, and then passing away. I, I think there's there's a new option here, which is let's feed the body everything that it needs to stay optimized, and we can just be rocking till 100 and beyond and, and live an incredible life. So um, I, I think enzymes play a major role in that. But as far as muscle building goes, so people talk about obviously protein, protein, protein when it comes to muscle building. And, and it is the key king macro. There's no macronutrient more important for weight loss or muscle building than protein. But it's not the protein you want. It's the amino acids. Uh, protein, undigested protein is a toxin. You know, that, that, that's really what an allergy is. You, your body can't break down this protein and your body sees it as a threat. So it's critical to break down the protein into these usable amino acids. And that's what uh, proteolytic enzymes do. 
but it's more than that. So, okay, if yes, if you take enzymes with the food, it'll start breaking it down into your stomach, intestinal tract. And as the food's moving along, the enzymes will actually keep working. And then the amino acids and other nutrients will pass through your intestinal tract and enter your bloodstream. Now, the, there's, the enzymes keep going. You know, the enzymes keep, you know, basically there are these catalysts that will break things apart or kickstart these different metabolic functions. And, you know, synthesizing amino acids into neurochemicals, neurotransmitters, muscle tissue, organ tissue is all of the magic that enzymes do. So enzymes are just incredible. I think not enough people know about them. I mean, a lot of biohackers do, but yeah, enzymes are, you know, uh, been a staple for me for a long time and will be for the, for the rest of my life. And particularly when it comes to the brain, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, with amino acids, those are the precursors for a lot of our neurotransmitters. So mm -hmm. what can you tell me about how enzymes actually impact our brain function and performance? Yeah, I've seen it. Um, I have a good friend of mine. He's, he's, he's kind of a night of mine. Um, I met him in his early seventies. He just turned 82 and he's been aging in reverse. So um, I have to be careful what I say here for legal or medical reasons. But when he started taking masszymes, um, he was able to transform his mood and stop using certain substances that he was using for his to, to stabilize his mood. So I, I, I've seen firsthand how impactful it can be on a, on a neurochemical level. And it just makes sense that if you're, if you're not able to, to break down the protein and form your own neurochemicals and neurotransmitters that your mood and other aspects of, of your brain are going to suffer. So yeah, again, your body needs the amino acids in order to form all kinds of incredible things such as neurotransmitters, muscle tissue, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome. And then, and then we didn't get into peptides. I mean, peptides, peptides are, I've always obviously become very popular in the uh, biohacker world and peptides are essentially uh, small chains of amino acids uh, put together and they do amazing things. So that's the other aspect of enzymes, right? You're breaking protein to amino acids, and then you can break amino acids down into peptides as well. Right, right. I just had Jay Campbell on the podcast, and he just released a, yeah. an awesome new book on on like a complete guide to peptides. So I'm I'm really readily awaiting to read that because um, yeah, peptides. I feel like just the more people I talk to, it really seems like kind of the future of medicine. Yeah, peptides are pretty mind blowing. You know, for people that don't know what a peptide is, it's typically a combination of two amino acids up to, I think around 130, um, 130, 135, somewhere in there. And they act as very precise keys in the body that trigger very specific functions. And the Russians were the ones that kind of cracked the code on this. And supposedly there's around 7,000 peptides in the body. I haven't, checked in a while but the last number i saw is we've only discovered about a thousand so there's a long long way to go to to really crack the the full peptide picture but they do all kinds of amazing things such as you know stimulate growth hormone production you can change the you can change your skin tone like if you do melanotan too um i'm a huge fan on the brain side i mean cerebral lysin is probably one of the most powerful things uh, you can you can take for brain optimization. I don't know if you've ever injected a high dose cerebral license cycle, but I have it, it's it's powerful, very powerful. I mean, it contains four different growth factors, and you know when you're when you're doing things like your feedback, I'm I'm going to share what is one of the top strategies for truly maximizing your gains. And um, this is not a, a, a brag, it's a fact. We, when I say we, me and two other guys um, at 40 Years of Zen, which is Dave Asprey's brain training facility, have every measurable record there. 
like every on, on every measurable level, one of us owns that record. And it's been our strategy's been to train really hard. So we typically train more than most people do. And in order to train harder, we need to feed the body and the brain more resources. So we hyperdose all kinds of things, such as NAD, magnesium, EFAs, DHA, and cerebral lysin. So if you do cerebral lysin like 30 days before your brain training or, a, a, again, a really hard cognitive experience and you keep it going, the neurogenesis and the recovery in the adaptability that your brain has is another dimension. I'm definitely going to look into cerebral lysis in a bit more and, and potentially start incorporating it because I, I think we we think alike in terms of, you know, stacking different things. I'm I'm such a big fan of when people are going through neurofeedback training, you know, of stacking every possible thing to decrease inflammation in the brain, to increase activity in the mitochondria, to really mm -hmm. give the body as much cellular energy as possible so it can yes. make all these electrical changes and improve its function through the neurofeedback. So I love what you're doing there. No, we're, we're on the same, on the same track. Um, yeah. So anything that, and that's how an old bodybuilding principle back to that. And, you know, some people say like bodybuilders were the first biohackers. I mean, they really are, um, you know, their ability to at the highest levels, like truly mutate their bodies into, you know, 300 pound shredded, bodybuilders like they're, they're able to counter genetic wiring there, there's two things your body doesn't want to do it doesn't want to build muscle mass and it doesn't want to lose body fat and bodybuilders have to do both simultaneously um so yeah it, it's it's truly impressive but what they do essentially is they hyper stress the body and then they give it a mega dose of resources in order to adapt and that's what I would call the principle of maximization, which is very different than optimization. And, you know, maximization has its risk. You know, obviously, uh, bodybuilders don't tend to live very long. And athletes in general are in the game of maximization, right? They're trying to maximize their endurance, their power, their strength, their speed, their whatever, their body weight. Um, and there's a price to that. And they're willing to pay it. And that's that's that. But we can apply that same principle on a brain level in a healthy way. And that's, that's what we try to do when we are, we're, we're really pushing it during a week, you know, brain training. For sure. And I know another uh, a mineral that you mentioned um, that you take a lot during brain training being magnesium. Mm -hmm. And this is like one of my favorite ones, uh, you know, just in terms of optimizing brain health and really reducing stress, calming the nervous system, promoting sleep. Um, I, I really, really uh, love, you know, the formulation you've put together because instead of having to, to grab my bottle of magnesium citrate and my bottle of three and eight, my bottle of glycinate, you know, you guys just put everything up. Is it seven forms of magnesium all in this one formulation? Plus, plus cofactors, which I really want to get into. So three years ago, we created a partnership with the university. It's called the International Birch University in Sarajevo in Bosnia. And we have a, a full-time lab team. We have 20 people, including full-time uh, chemists, biologists, people with PhDs in bacteria. And we're literally running dozens of tests a week, every week on enzymes, probiotics. Like we bought you know, a half million dollar HPLC machine so we can measure uh, neurotransmitter formation from the probiotics, all kinds of amazing things, which we can get into. But I'd say the most amazing discovery, and I say discovery lightly here because it's it's nothing new, but nobody's ever quantified this stuff. And I feel like this is where as a company we're pioneering a lot because um, you know, most people in the supplement space, they either create molecules and then sell the molecules to supplement companies. And then the supplement companies just put that in a bottle and sell it. They don't do their own R and D. So cofactors will improve the performance of 
a molecule 30 to 300%. Like we've never seen anything lower than that. And of course you have to find the right cofactor, but I'll give you an example that just literally uh, came, the data came this week on Tuesday. So we've known that when you stack and combine the magnesiums that there's synergy, it's undoubtable. You can feel it, it's experiential. But we didn't have the hard data. So a few weeks ago, we're like, okay, it's time to, to start you know, proving to ourselves and then we'll share the data with the world eventually um, what's happening. So we decided to do red blood cell magnesium absorption tests because that's going to be the first place the magnesium typically gets absorbed. So first thing that we, we've seen is, and we, we, nothing surprising here, but the magnesiums when they're combined have a much higher uptake in the red blood cells. So that was great. That was great to see uh, some hard data. And then we wanted to show that by adding a cofactor, which we do of course in, in magnesium breakthrough as well as sleep breakthrough that it would increase it even further. And it did, it was about a 35% increase, a further increase in uptake. So, you know, that's a big way that we formulate is we're always looking for, let's give the body kind of the raw material and then give it all the cofactors it needs to convert throughout the cascade. You know, your body has all of these hormonal cascades, like for example, the testosterone hormonal cascade or the melatonin hormonal cascade. And if you're giving your body everything that it needs to help transform these building blocks into the target molecule, the effects are going to be exponential. And that's how we do the nootropics and that's how we're doing the sleep formula and the magnesium and et cetera. And yeah, magnesium, first of all, it's a precursor to serotonin. Again, it's a building block for serotonin and serotonin is a building block for melatonin. So anything you can do to increase serotonin is a really good thing. It's it's a really good thing for sleep. Anything you can do to calm down your nervous system before bed is a great thing. Anything you can do to slow down your beta brainwave activity before bed is a great thing. And if you look at the data on insomniacs, they ha tend to have hyperactive beta brainwave activity, which is not surprising. When when you when you've done enough neurofeedback and you know what high beta brainwave or hyperactive beta brainwave activity looks like, uh, you know, they tend to be ADHD. They tend to uh, feel worried all the time. They can't stop ideating. And all of those things can obviously negatively impact sleep. So there's certain molecules you can take to actually decrease beta brainwave activity and increase alpha Two of them include L-theanine, which has probably been my favorite sleep molecule. It's uh, obviously from green tea. It's an amino acid. And what's great about it is that it relaxes the nervous system without causing drowsiness. And of course, during the day, if you stack it with caffeine, it'll help extend the caffeine and really smooth out the jitteriness. But if you take it by itself or with other sleep molecules before bed, um, it tends to really help people fall asleep and stay asleep and get better sleep. And then GABA, pharma GABA especially, uh, significantly decreases beta brainwave activity and increases alpha. So we use both of those in sleep breakthrough. And again, we're big fans of, of stacking and combining molecules to again, create the most powerful effects possible. Let's talk about pharma GABA because GABA is one that oftentimes just if you take GABA, you know, just as a supplement by itself, oftentimes it doesn't actually cross the blood brain barrier, you know, meaning it's got some effects in the gut, but there might not be a ton of actual brain benefits such as the calming and inhibitory effects that that neurotransmitter exerts. So tell me about pharma GABA and how it's different. Yeah, so pharma GABA is a molecule uh, developed by Mitsubishi. And by the way, for those a lot of people don't know, but Mitsubishi creates uh, a lot of incredible molecules like BioPQQ and pharma GABA. Um, and first of all, none of the GABAs uh, cross the blood brain barrier. The current belief is that it's 
through the gut to brain axis or through the vagal nerve, it's having an impact that way. And it's certainly, it's certainly working. There's no doubt the data shows that it has this incredible impact on the brain, on the nervous system. And yeah, it doesn't cross the blood brain barrier. So it, it's obviously happening through another pathway. And back to the probiotics. So we've been testing again the neurotransmitters produced by every probiotic commercially available. And, you know, the number one GABA producer is P301, which is one of our, num our top sellers as well. It's a single strain, uh, very special L plantarum. We like to say it's the Navy SEALs of, of probiotics. It's one of only two strains that's proteolytic that we've ever tested, meaning it'll actually break down protein like the enzymes. And it's the number one GABA producer. And it peaks like eight hours later. So if you take it with dinner, you'll get a nice steady flow of GABA production in your gut uh, by the time you're sleeping. But yeah, that's the current belief is that it's ha uh, impacting you through the gut to brain axis or through the vagal nerve. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Matt, I wanted to get to uh, Nootopia and all the nootropics. And the reason I, I did this deliberately about, you know, even though my podcast is all about brain optimization, I think that covering the foundations of brain health that we've touched on related to, you know, enzymes, digestion, um, you know, sleep, magnesium, all of these things, in my opinion, I think people need to start instituting prior to, you know, taking these fancy formulations, nootropics, where it's like they might see some benefit. But in my opinion, nootropics are like, you know, they make a good brain great. And if you're already, if you're not doing, if you're sleeping three hours a night and eating junk food and all these other things, and then you take some nootropics and expect, you know, to have a perfect brain, I think, I think that's just kind of the wrong way to look at it. But for people, you know, maybe like us and like other biohackers listening who already have kind of dialed in all these other things that we're talking about, I think nootropics are a game changer. So I'd love to hear some more about just you know, what went into Newtopia and like the team that you built with amazing product formulators and just how, how you guys developed all these really cool formulations. Yeah. First of all, I agree with you that, you know, the healthier your body and brain is the better the, the nootropics will work. However, we do have a saying at Newtopia, which is hashtag no bad days. And that came about uh, when you know, I was experimenting with all the nootropics, the formulas and uh, other people. And, you know, sometimes there's days where you're traveling or things happen and, and you don't sleep enough. And it was amazing that we could newt our way out of the hole, so to speak. Right. So it was, it was, that's where the hashtag no bad days came from, but I don't think that's sustainable. You know, you, you can have like, one day a week or once in a while where you didn't sleep enough or you're tired or things are happening and you can use nootropics to get optimized and have a great day. But if you're consistently sleep deprived and you're adding stimulants and things that rev up your brain on top of that, um, it can just kind of exa exasperate the burnout potentially. So you, you got to be mindful of that. And the more rested you are, and just the more resourced you are, the better they work. Yeah, I'll just share quickly um, a little bit of my story, then we'll get to Newtopia around brain optimization. So, you know, I was born with the wiring of an alcoholic, started drinking when I was 12 and kind of kept it under control-ish until 28. And when I was 28, I, I got divorced and just went off the rails, you know, for about five years. Um, was pretty much intoxicated on something every day for like five years straight. Got sober. It's going to be 14 years this month. And um, I was compromised. I know I, I did some damage during that five-year run. And you know, even a couple of, year, of years into sobriety, uh, my short-term memory was gone. My ability to focus was shot. Like There was just a lot of things that weren't working the way they should. And that got me really motivated. And then I started uh, doing a lot of reading and research. 
The first thing that I found and tried that was really a game changer was lion's mane, which is a mushroom that will dramatically increase BDNF, especially if you hyperdose it. So I did that and within like 30 days, I'm like, whoa, I'm remembering things that I wasn't remembering and I'm able to just think better. And then I started hyperdosing or, you know, doing a really healthy dose of, of EFAs and, and DHA and that really helped. Then started doing neurofeedback um, about eight years ago. That was transformative. And then I started looking at nootropics. And with the nootropics, it was like, I love the the promise of it. Again, anybody who's watched Limitless, the movie with Bradley Cooper, um, I mean, it's a pretty compelling pitch, right? It's like, okay, yeah, who who doesn't want that? Minus the side effects, right? Minus the all the consequences that he went through. But nothing really worked that well. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples. Like I remember buying a bunch of modafinil, which I, I, I still have because I just haven't used it. Um, and modafinil works very similarly to caffeine and it would be powerful for the day of, but the next day I always felt, um, a little bit drawn down. Like I felt like my baseline was lower after taking modafinil. Then I tried some other brands and, you know, they would be okay for, for energy, but I wasn't feeling the, the nuances on the state shifts and the mood shifts and the neurochemical shifts that I wanted. Like it was just kind of a one dimensional gear, so to speak. <clears throat> Anyways, a few years ago, a friend of mine posted on Facebook, all these weird looking pills and said, uh, yeah, I've tried all the nootropics and these are just another dimension. And I, I, I know the guy well, I trust him. I, I messaged him. I'm like, can you introduce me to, to this guy? And keep in mind, like I was already working on nootropic formulas. Like I was already actually designing some formulas at the time. <clears throat> so I went to uh, Mark Effinger's website, AKA Mr. Newts. I bought, I think like four or five grand worth of his products. Like I bought everything he had. I'm like, okay, I'm going to really put this to the test. And I ran experiments on a daily basis, usually twice a day, like once in the morning, once in the afternoon. And I tried every combination. I had this really elaborate spreadsheet where I'm tracking what's happening, what's working, you know, what's not working. And after a couple of weeks, I'm like, okay, this, this, this is another level. This is, you know, what I've been dreaming of and, and wanting. So yeah, it's been a few months, um, negotiating with Mark and we acquired his company, uh, web nutrients and rebranded and launched Newtopia and kind of built a, a real system around it, which before it was just a lot of different formulas and not really structured as a system. And yeah, it's just been amazing. Um, I think we're up to 13 formulas now. Um, and again, they do everything from increase your, your mood There's one called upbeat, uh, which is so the, t the most popular top two uh, products we have in terms of popularity is brain flow, which I took this morning, which is an amazing product for verbal fluency. It's, it's more on the milder side, but you'll definitely notice that your right left brain are far more synchronized. And there's an amazing oil called the intellect uh, tree seed tree oil usually grown in India. It's this really cool looking seed and it's really powerful. And then it's a great base to add other nootropics. And the way we're formulating um, the nootropics is we're trying to create, you know, neurochemical shifts and not just one neurochemical, but, you know, it's dopamine and acetylcholine or it's serotonin and acetylcholine or serotonin and dopamine, or it's GABA and a little bit of adrenaline. So it's these combinations. And again, of course, if you listen to uh, Huberman or some other people, they love to talk about neurochemicals in isolation, which I think is helpful to understand their nature, but they're never in isolation in our brains, right? They're always in concert with each other. And, you know, if you can try to optimize the right set of neurochemicals based on what tasks that you're trying to do, whether it's being at an event and you want to be more extroverted, which is a great way to use the nootropics. Like if you take upbeat and 
power solution, uh, you know, we call it kind of like a social dominant stack. Like you'll, you will be more extroverted and you will be, uh, more dominant, uh, you know, when you're meeting people and sometimes that's what you want. If you want to be hyper-focused by yourself, writing, working on spreadsheets, then we have another formula called ultimate focus. Um, if you want like all the energy apex is incredible. It's like eight to 12 hours. So yeah, it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of variety there. So people can truly kind of pick what they need based on their day. Right. And uh, I was mentioning to you before we we started airing that I'm having uh, having Mark on uh, the show, uh, Mark Effinger, Mr. Newts, and uh, you guys sent me a you know an awesome combination of the different stacks, and I was actually playing around with that exact social dominant stack that you mentioned at the the last weekend was the first time I'd ever ran a booth at a conference. So I was talking to a million people and I usually feel like very, like my social battery gets drained relatively easily, definitely an introvert. And man, that uh, taking the upbeat and then just sipping on the power solution all day, I was feeling really, really good. Like I felt just like in that flow state, talking to people all day um, and felt like it definitely increased that, like the battery, my social battery quite a lot. Like I would have gotten exhausted talking to people you know, a couple hours in, but I, I felt great all day. So I feel you're uniquely qualified to, to get into a, one of my favorite rabbit holes, which is high performance state creation and activation. So here's, here's my model for that. Obviously you're an expert on the neuroelectrical side, which is, you know, using EEG to train the brain. But as you know, it's also neurostructural where we have these different hubs in the brain and we can also train uh, the connection and, and help improve different networks. And that's the structural part. And then there's the neurochemical piece, which is obviously what Utopia brings to the party. And if you think about a state, you know, a state, for an example, such as a verbal connected salesman at an event, which is what you needed to be at the booth, there's a certain high performance state that's going to make you more effective, right? And the axiom of the mind is what fires together, wires together. So what happens is when you take a stack like a beat and power solution, and of course you're, there's a mental process happening where you're selling, you're communicating, you're, you have intent. <clears throat> you will start hardwiring a new state that will become easier and easier to access. And again, there's neurogenesis occurring because of the neurostructural activation, the neurochemical activation, as well as you um, operating in this new way and it's amazing to have a set of different states that you can shift to on command based on what you need. And that's something that I've developed over the last few years. And that was an epiphany that came to me uh, during one of the Zens. I was doing neurofeedback. I'm like, you know, you need to develop a set of high performance states. But I took the time to think about what I wanted and think about like which states I needed I was kind of maybe two dimensional at the time. And then over time I've added, you know, uh, three or four more new states that I can shift to based on what I'm doing. And at this point, it's just hardwired. Like it's, I can easily quickly shift into those. And I think that the nootropics truly help that process. They help create that, amplify that and also activate it. So it's a really, it's an incredible tool in the toolbox. Yes, and definitely such a powerful addition to to brain training, to doing neurofeedback. And I wanted to ask you, you know, specifically, like you probably have more experience doing neurofeedback than 99.9999% of people out there. And I'm curious, what have you noticed just change the biggest changes within yourself, within your performance, and just your interaction with the world around you that's changed through doing neurofeedback? Like I'm passionate about a lot of aspects of health and obviously you just hyper passionate about health, but I would say 
my passion for neurofeedback might be the strongest out of anything in health, just because it's been so transformational for me. I'll go back to the beginning and, and go back to the first training, um, which was done in Arizona at, at BioCybernaut. And what happened was, for starters, a 80% reduction in reactivity. And that's something I've noticed, like when you're doing a lot of emotional cleansing, you know, forgiveness work, or you know, you're processing traumas one way or another, that every trauma that you process reduces your reactivity, which makes sense because your amygdala is not hyperactive looking for similar threats. So that was transformational for my relationship with my wife. We used to have, uh, I would say, regular arguments. You know, my wife's Latina, so she's she's fiery. And, you know, I was fiery as well. So when you got two fiery people living together, it's uh, with with trauma and reactivity. It can be explosive at times, which it was. And then I, I did that training and then that stopped. I'm like, that's, that's amazing. And it's realized like, yeah, I just wasn't reacting the same way to things. And by the way, like as a side note, she went a few years later and then I saw the same thing in her, her reactivity uh, dropped 80%. As a side note, every training I've done, I feel like my reactivities drop like, and I'm just ballparking here, but you know, 80% ish. And it's just been amazing uh, at this point. I almost never react to anything. Like it's, it's at that level now having done like, you know, eight weeks of that. Um, I mean, once in a blue moon, something hits me, but it's really, really rare. And that, that alone, I would say transforms your life. And obviously um, along with that is an, an incredible increase in emotional intelligence. You know, one of the things I've noticed is every training you're increasing your RAM. So similar to a computer, if you're adding more RAM, you can process more things. You can hold things in mind. You can handle more weight. And, you know, from a business perspective, I think a lot of people tap out. They Their growth stops because, not because they're not intelligent enough. It's because their RAM is maxed out. You know, they're not able to handle more things, more activity, more people, more projects. And I feel like every training I do, I'm just adding more RAM. I'm cleaning my RAM and adding more RAM. <clears throat> you know, I've been able to triple my reading speed. Um, th that's measured, by the way. Um, so all kinds of just amazing things in terms of these different attributes. My ability to focus. I mean, I can work six, seven hours straight. I don't recommend that. Um, I think taking micro breaks is is a, is a really good idea. There was some amazing data that came out just a few weeks ago. I don't know if you saw this, but if you work nonstop, let's say they just go from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting, the beta brainwave activity, activity just keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And when you have hyperactive beta brainwave activity for too long, it wears out the, the hardware, right? Which I've been there. I mean, I've, I've worn my, my brain out a few times by just being too, too deep in, in beta for too long. So, you know, I think having a couple times throughout the day where you're um, really managing your nervous system and shifting to alpha or theta, doing non-sleep deep breaths, playing with your kids, playing with your pets, walk in nature, any of these things really helps to reduce that hyperactive beta brainwave activity and gives you more endurance and higher performance. So anyways, I mean, I can keep going on and on, but that's, that's some of the big stuff. Awesome. Yeah. No, I, I love the reference to, to beta. And, and that's definitely what I see with a lot of clients and patients that I work with, you know, the higher beta frequencies they're at, the more, anxiety, ruminations, worry, obsessions, like all of those uh, manifestations of like a sympathetic nervous system in hyperdrive. And then it really wears the, wears your nervous system out and be, can oftentimes lead to this, you know, depression. That's really like an end stage anxiety. So I've seen it time and time again. And that's why a lot of neurofeedback training is focused on increasing some of those slower, slower brainwaves, promoting the, the parasympathetic response. 
Matt, we're, uh, we're coming up on to the end of the show, but before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you just about, you know, you've, as I mentioned in the introduction, you know, you've had over 15 years of experience formulating supplements and you've been very successful, um, you know, with kind of e-commerce um, with, uh, you know, I think you mentioned since 2002. And I was wondering with your, um, you know, developing, you know, these supplement companies and other sorts of peak performance endeavors, what have been the biggest things that you've learned in your journey that have really taken you to that high performance state, maybe besides any of the things that, that we've already touched on? Yeah, we talked a little bit about uh, maximization, which obviously, uh, you know, I was really deep into both on the bodybuilding front and the partying front back in the day. <laughs> But, you know, over time, I've really learned that the, the real game is optimization. So what does that mean? It means that with every molecule or hormone in the body, every system, there's like a Goldilocks zone where you will perform your best, feel your best. That system will be at its peak. And it's not that more is better, it's that optimal is better. So... I think that you're doing regular blood work, uh, doing all kinds of, of, you know, like data is critical for this process. Like you need data to get hyper optimized. So of course, you know, neurofeedback devices, biofeedback devices, biomarker, blood work, like all of these data points can help you fix things that are off track that you're not aware of, which I think is really uh, critical. The other thing to realize too, is that everybody's got genetic mutations and variants. Some of them are good. Some of them give people superpowers and other people or other uh, variants put people at risk for certain issues. And a lot of people are just not aware of these, uh, these variants. So we are uh, working on releasing a nutrigenomic test um, in a few months, which we're excited about. And then we've been working on the ultimate nutrition book for about three years. It's, it's going to be published by Hay House, which is one of my favorite publishers. So we're really excited about that. It's going to be published in September. Yeah. So, but it's over 350,000 words. We cover every uh, nutritional strategy, every diet from, you know, raw food to carnivore to paleo to if it fits your macros, we cover every goal from mental performance, athletic performance, to fat loss to muscle building and nutrigenomics and digestion and all of these things. So yeah, I think that you're know, realizing that the game is really like optimization is the name of the game was uh, something obviously that helped really shape our company. And I think that uh, in general, the, the industry is still young and there's going to be more and more devices that allow us to see things that we can't see. And the devices will get cheaper and better. And the ultimate, which is you know really what I'm excited about, is constant data streams. Like if you look at a CGM as an example, or a neurofeedback device, both of those are in the in the same bucket here. The power of having a constant data stream versus a snapshot is exponential. Like if you prick your finger in the morning and do a blood test and you you measure your blood sugar levels, it's a good data point, you know, it'll show you, okay, here's your fasted blood sugar levels. But if you're wearing a constant glucose monitor and you're, you're tracking what's happening to your blood sugar as you're eating food, as you're exercising, as you're getting stressed out, as you're doing cold therapy and you're seeing all these variances, you learn way more. It's the same thing with your feedback. So I think if we fast forward, five, 10, 15 years, we'll all be wearing some form of watch or device that's giving us like a whole set of incredible data points from hormones to, you know, nutrients that's going to take our optimization to the next level. So yeah, Bioptimizers is excited to keep pioneering. I mean, my goal is truly to, to take people from sick to superhuman. And when I say superhuman, we mean it like we want to push the boundaries of what's possible. So we're just getting started. Like, you know, right now, obviously we're a supplement company, but 
we're working on some, some much bigger things that'll take years to bring to market, but you know, I'm, I'm here to, to do this for many decades. So I'm excited about it. Awesome. I am too. I'm curious to see what you guys end up creating and, and love the work that you're doing. So Thanks. Matt, absolutely. So if, uh, if people want to find out more about buy optimizers or Newtopia or just connect with you, what, uh, where can you direct listeners to? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, I'd recommend if you want to take your sleep to the next level, check out sleepbreakthrough.com forward slash Neuroflex. You'll get 10% off. And uh, also you can use Neuroflex on Neuroflex 10 on the Boptimizer website. So bio, B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S. Uh, so it's bioptimizers.com. Check out all of our products. We have the most complete suite of digestive solutions on the market. Like we have enzymes for every diet. We have several different probiotic blends for different goals. And then if you're interested in, in the nootropics, check out newtopia.com. It's N-O-O-T-O-P-I-A.com. And again, you can use Neuroflex 10 to save 10% off. Mm -hmm. And yeah, check them out. I mean, all of our products have a 365 day, no questions asked guarantee. Um, I think it's the best guarantee in the business. And, you know, if, if for any reason it didn't work as good as you thought it would, we'll give you every single penny back. That's it. Awesome. Well, we will have links to all of those resources in the show notes. And for those of you guys who are listening to that podcast, whether that be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or any of the major other audio streaming platforms, you can also check out the full video episode on our YouTube channel. Uh, Neuroflex, and U R O F L E X. Matt, I wanted to really thank you for just coming on the show today and sharing all of your knowledge and expertise with us. Yeah, man. It's, it's a pleasure. Uh, we, we met a few years ago, so it's great to, to reconnect. And yeah, uh, brace yourself. You're going to have a blast, Mr. Nudes. Mark, Mark's one of the funnest people uh, I've ever hung out with and met. And he's a world of knowledge. So I'm, I'm sure you guys are going to have a, a blast for sure.